From the Asgard Company Studios in beautiful Wichita Falls, Texas, from the finest mind in the modern fitness industry, the one true voice in the strength and conditioning profession, the most important podcast on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, starting Strength Radio. Uh, it's Friday. Right. Welcome back to Starting Strength Radio. It's Friday. And, uh, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? There's one a week. And here we are on one of them. Thanks for being here with us. We're here today with Tommy and Tanner from Massonomics. Now, those of you who don't know who Massonomics is, uh, I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> I mean, these guys are these guys are huge. They're huge on the internet, and uh, and they make uh, what all, what what do you guys make? They make the most besides that flag. What, but, yeah, they make the most expensive uh, weightlifting shorts ever invented. The most expensive weightlifting shorts in the history of weightlifting shorts. We, they, nobody can afford them. Nobody afford them, nobody so afford no, them. so nobody's got any. Yeah. But if you can afford them, you can own these things. How much are they? Ah, they're coming in just under thirty U.S. dollars. Yeah, twenty nine ninety five is what you're telling me. That's in yuck. that ballpark, yeah. Man, what are y'all thinking about? You just <laughs> well, there's that. You just if you rip. look, here's the deal: if you don't have the balls to ask for it, nobody's going to give it to you. Exactly. Right? That's right. how we live our life. Yep. That's 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 a you know, a, a, a mantra. That's price a mantra. is what you pay. Value is what you get. And in this, the value is almost priceless. Yeah, it is. It's just hard to calculate, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so you guys are in North Dakota or South Dakota? South Dakota. South Dakota, which means you're not quite in Canada. We're yep, just a little short of Canada. Yep. Short well, of we're Canada. We're on the north north edge of South Dakota, so we're not too far still. I think you're Canadians. Is what I think. I mean, listen <laughs> to them talk. <laughs> you guys don't say full Canadian a boot, do you? We're not quite there, but you do hear you, you get that drawn out O sound, you know the, yeah, the, the uh, like that. And not, we're not, we're not quite not, as friendly. You as don't Canadian turn it either. into a U. You're not as friendly as Canadian. And you're not nearly as talkative as Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> Canadians are there's some interesting folks. They really are. So what what are you guys doing? What is massonomics for? What does it mean? How'd you get the name? Have you reinvented economics and called the massonomics? Tell us about the company. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the million dollar question on what is massonomics. And until <laughs> just recently, um, we didn't have a good answer for that. But uh, I, I guess to go back to its very beginning, it would probably start with Tanner. Yeah, it originally started out as a YouTube channel was our first uh, first thing that we hit, and we were just kind of recording some lifting videos. We were into powerlifting and and started vlogging that, I suppose, is what it originally started out as. And you could say it was a pretty poor attempt at it too. Yeah, it was, it was definitely piss poor. It was piss poor uh, blogging blogging on on powerlifting training is what we started out well, with. Well, there's no shortage and, of that, is there? No, <laughs> <laughs> just just flooding that saturated yeah. market. Yeah. So that. It didn't take us very long to realize that probably wasn't the uh, avenue we were going to go down and get much exposure. And and Tanner and I lifted at the same gym together at the t at the time, and uh, he had mentioned that he had started this YouTube channel called Massonomics. And by yeah. trade, I'm a graphic designer, and I thought, you know, that's a pretty cool name. It has a, it's definitely noteworthy. I think you, it stands out. So I told him I'll make a logo for you, and uh, I designed the logo, sent it over, and Tanner was like, holy shit. That is amazing. Like, that's so cool. And from there, I was like, well, let's put it on some T-shirts. So we started doing some T-shirts, uh, built a website. The website turned into a bit of a blogging platform. At the time, we were publishing a decent amount of articles. And then uh, the Instagram presence really started to pick up. And that's probably where we found our stride was uh, Instagram, uh, making memes, just kind of having fun with the culture of of gym life in general. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a big part of it. The, the having fun is where we kind of found our, uh, our space or, uh, having fun and adding our, a little bit of levity and humor to everything. At first, when we very first started, we were, we were probably trying to be experts in somewhere where we should not be the go-to. If someone wants to 
learn about training as a beginner getting into lifting, they should go to starting strength. They shouldn't come to massonomics. And it took us a while to realize that, but we found where we could add value to things is taking what's already out there, adding a little humor to it, to it, putting our uh, massonomic spice on it, and then <laughs> uh, putting it back out into the market. Yeah. So then today, that massonomics really, we would say it's a it's an apparel business. We do a weekly podcast. Um, we have a website and YouTube channel. Um, and then, yeah, the, the, the Instagram presence, that's, that's really what it is. And there's a gym too. There's yeah. also a gym. We do have a gym. We, we're, we're pretty fairly rural. We live in a town of about, uh, about 25,000. It's the biggest town in a 200 mile radius. And we, we have this little club gym that we manage. It's not, it's not a profit center for us by any means, but, uh, that started out as just we wanted a place to be able to train, be able to get the equipment that we want, and uh, just be able to be around kind of only the people that we want to be around and not have to go to a, a Globo gym and uh, experience all those experiences. Sounds familiar. Well, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we, we're familiar with your, with your, with your deal there. Uh, So, what's the name of the town you're in? Aberdeen, South Dakota. Aberdeen, okay. Named named after Aberdeen, Scotland. So, yeah, I've I've been there. I've I've actually been to Aberdeen, Scotland, but I haven't been to Aberdeen, South Dakota. Well, well it's hey, gotta be your next <coughs> pin on your on the, your. I got map. the car over here. <laughs> I've got the car. Texas. I've got about half a tank of gas. That you know, it'll get me We're part of the way. Like eighteen hours away, something like that. If you're in northern South Dakota, yeah, you're probably every minute of 18 hours away. If you just point the yeah. car north and, uh, and start going, you'll get here, I think. I'll get there. I mean, where else could I end up? <laughs> you you are north of us, and after all, you are the only town for 250 miles. <laughs> I mean, if there's if I want to buy a Coke, I'll just have to buy it in Aberdeen, wouldn't I? Yep, we've uh, got the Walmart here, so that's the best best. So bet. when when all the little towns out, you know, a hundred miles away from you, uh, say they're, you know, we need to go to town today. They mean to, they mean Aberdeen. Yep, right? they are referring to us. That's exactly the language that people use when they when they describe it to go to town. Oh, I know, oh. I know. Up in Colorado, when we go to town, we talk about going to Alamosa, <laughs> for God's sakes. Alamosa, you know, Alamosa is the coldest city in the lower 48 states. It is. Have, in, have you been to Aberdeen in, before, though? <laughs> it gets pretty damn cold look, here. In January, where <laughs> everywhere else in the United States is five below, where Aberdeen is five below, Alamosa is 35 below zero for no apparent reason. I. I don't have the. How do you do plumbing there? That's I mean, good question. How's there no permafrost in in Alamosa? There will be a little shield of permafrost right under town there. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, so you guys sell T-shirts. Tell me about your gym. We've got the gym. Uh, like I said, we. I kind of run it. Um, as a little bit of a cooperative is how I would describe it. You know, legally it's not, it's a, it's a soil sole proprietorship entity, but, uh, I try to maintain it a little bit like a cooperative. I, I let the members in, uh, um, on the budget on what we're purchasing. Um, everyone knows the money coming in, the money coming out, and we literally don't take money from it. It is purely, it, it finances itself. It runs itself. Um, but then we, we get the advantage of, of, because we're running a podcast about lifting and we're selling merchandising about, li about lifting that, uh, we get to use it as a, a physical location and it, it works well for videos and, um, pictures and fo fo photography and everything else that we need. Uh, but really it, it's a, actually a footprint wise, we're maybe about 4,000 square feet now, something like that. It's grown mm, a little bit over the years. Pretty good. Um, but it's, it's mostly it's strength training based completely. It's, um, a lot of powerlifting equipment, strongman equipment, um, quite a few people that lift there that compete in powerlifting. But I'd, I'd say the majority of people there are just people that come that want to get stronger. 
that's that's the right. key driving force for people that are showing up. And that we don't advertise. We don't have a sign out front. We're we're stuck in a basement where uh, you can't get there unless you know somebody that goes there. And that's kind of the way we we like to keep the gym part of it. You sound like the kind of a guy with a day job. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the thing. We we both have. Yeah. 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 We, we both have day jobs. Um, I am, I run my own graphic design business. Uh, it's called Tommy D creative and Tanner. I am, uh, I work in agricultural finance, uh, everyone around here or grain farmer, grain farming is the primary industry around here. And I, um, underrate large loans for operating loans for, for grain farmers is what I do in my, mm-hmm. my day job. And that I do that. And mostly, actually, mostly what I do in my day job is think about what uh, we're going to be doing for massonomics <laughs> next. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, you sound like you're on autopilot during the day, so <laughs> you can kind of yeah. sit there and plan on your next, uh, t-shirt conquest. Right. That, that is, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of joking about it and everything, but that is kind of, uh, has always been our strategy is that uh, at first massonomics was just a hobby. I think it's something we both did in our, our spare time over and, the last couple of and years. We'll, and when we say at first, we mean for the first three and a half years right. of, of mm-hmm. producing content. I and, mean, there was, there was no momentum behind it. And it, it's just turned into recently where it started to really, uh, take off for us and t- take yeah. off in the way that we actually get to make some money doing it. You know, we put money, money, in our pocket at the end of the day. And we, We've always went in with the strategy. We 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 bootstrapped it completely. You know, we weren't putting any money in it, into it be, to beginning. It was just growing uh, organically over time. But now it is to the point where we actually get to profit out of it. So it, it does take more thought on our our part that we got this ball rolling right. uh, rolling downhill a little bit, and now we kind of don't want to screw it up. Well, so, but 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 then you know comes the guilt, right? I've never made any money off of this before, and now I'm getting kind of. I made five hundred bucks off this last week. Is <laughs> is that right? What should I, I do? What should I do with it? Should I donate that to? <laughs> that's sure what charity sure should I done? A problem I run into. <laughs> uh, sounds like you guys are doing pretty good. How many How many shirts do you have right now in the inventory? Well, actual, different, if different you run designs, used products. I think we have maybe 15, 20 different items. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that's one thing we've gotten a lot more proactive on. It used to just be like, oh, it's been several months since we've had a shirt. We should try and come up with something. Um, this year now we're really trying to be more proactive on having drops, like seasonal drops every couple months. So, um, yeah, right now, probably around 15, I would say by the end of the year, that'll grow probably another 10, 10 shirts. Yeah. Um, and then we'll also have mm-hmm. some sweatshirts, shorts, joggers, things like that to go along with it. Yeah. Right. And Rip, Rip, we know your favorite one is the baby shit yellow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, and you know how you have any idea how good I look in a baby shit yellow t-shirt. <laughs> we were talking about I, how handsome I was earlier, but I, you know, this is. This came in from our friends in in Korea yesterday. Uh, says obviously starting strength. Obviously, you can clearly see that. <laughs> clearly, yeah. and uh, yeah, we've got several coaches in in Korea. Note that I'm saying Korea, not that I'm saying North or South Korea, because <laughs> you never get a shirt from North Korea. <laughs> right, so that just not. I mean, it's just not worth you know mentioning. So I visited uh, North Korea, and all I got was a stupid shirt. Oh my god, was this stupid? <laughs> I visited North Korea, and all I got was a stupid bullet <laughs> in my ass. You guys yep. aren't going to use that one, are you? Can can that be our next shirt? Yeah. <laughs> no, y'all y'all go ahead and use that if you want to. All Visit right, we got the blessing. I, that's fine. We're we're not, we've got our own little problems with shirts right now so uh, uh official license starting strength on it <laughs> officially licensed product of starting strength. licensed <laughs> to mason property of starting strength used by permission something, <laughs> something to that effect proper attribution so uh how many members of the gym We've got about 30, 35 to 40 is all. And right. like I said, we don't, uh, we don't try to push that higher. I mean, we take more if it's the right people, but we're not, n- not, uh, actively trying to, uh, yeah. bump that up 
Yeah, we're, we're worried about kind that. of in the same the right situation. Open, uh, you know, yeah. we, like the sign on our door says, uh, Wichita Falls Athletic Club is this private strength training facility invitation. Our membership is by invitation only, which yep. lends it a aura of mystique. People want to be a part of something that doesn't want them in it. That's you know, true. You know, <laughs> so uh, I don't know. We've been we've actually been a little bit busier recently. So uh, uh, we were closed unofficially for a couple of weeks during the first of this COVID hoax hysteria. And, you know, there was a bunch of rumblings around town that we were, you know, all the gyms are going to have to be closed. And and so we uh, had the back door open and uh, some of our members decided to stay home. But that's their choice. And if they wanted to train, I was not going to tell them they couldn't because they pay me to be open, not to be closed. And City Wichita Falls doesn't own my gym, so they can't close me. You know, it's my decision to be closed. What did you guys do? I mean, from what I understand, South Dakota has kind of a halfway sane governor, don't they? It's been it, it, pretty it, hands off. <laughs> yeah. It depends on good. who you ask in South Dakota at this point. Some, some say – the best governor that there could be. And some say completely insane. I think there's like, it's like anywhere else. There's uh certainly more factions forming all the time. It seems like, but I do well, think she has been pretty, pretty hands off. Did she treat you? As as did she treat you as an adult? It, yeah. It's basically <laughs> been, yeah. You guys handle it. You take care of it. Good. So yeah, in, that's, in that's, that respect, it has I, been, um, I, it's on the people. I think I'm moving to South Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's worse places to be. Obviously, there's worse yeah. places to be. Uh, we decided to stick around. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, there's something to be said for that. You guys aren't yeah. complete idiots, so there are <laughs> there are reasons, obviously, to be there, right? Property is right. reasonable. You know, yep. the government's kind of hands of off. Is pretty reasonable. Cost of yeah. living is low. Nobody bangs on your door at three o'clock in the morning wanting your kitchen furniture you know you you get to take advantage of the full four seasons too in south dakota right. you get a little I'll bit bet you do don't you <laughs> yeah i bet january is an interesting experience in northern south dakota uh it certainly is you guys being in the shirt business in the merchandise business um the Arnold is the is the biggest thing in this industry every year, and uh, it's in Columbus, Ohio. Those of you that don't know don't know what the Arnold is. It's uh, uh, it's called the Arnold, but I think the uh, official name of it is the uh, Fitness Expo. What what are they? What's the actual? I think now it's the Arnold say? Fitness and Strength Expo. Is that is that what they're going? Arnold with now? Fitness That's and Strength Expo. Right. The, the thing started off, he, he uh, sponsored a big physique contest up there a long time ago, but the thing has grown into just a huge event uh, over the past 25 years. It's the, it may well be the biggest economic event in the state of Ohio all year. I can't think of a bigger one. Uh, I, I would believe yeah. that. We, uh, we were up there, uh, for uh, the uh, USA Weightlifting's last Board of Governors meeting was held at the Arnold back, God almighty, that was probably 2008 or nine. It's been a long time ago, 2008 or nine. So it's been 11 or 12 years ago we were there. And uh, the show itself, I mean, there was, there was all kinds of athletic competitions attached to it 40 or 50 different contests um there was uh uh usa powerlifting has a raw a raw meat and a and a geared meat up there um usa weightlifting has a meet there all of the i think there was a fencing contest a fencing yeah. meet associated uh, with yep. it it's all kinds of all kinds of things going on at the arnold and 
the year uh, that we were there, um, and we didn't have a booth, but we were, because uh, at the time we couldn't afford it, but and it was hideously expensive back then. But it still uh, is. <laughs> that there, has was, not changed. there were 300,000 square feet of vendor space. They have a downtown convention center in Columbus. And it the, the size of this thing just boggles the mind how big this damn thing is. And uh it was it was it was insane. There had to have been a half million people at this thing. It was this 300,000 square foot space was completely full. It's completely full. And, uh, I mean, you couldn't walk. I've never seen this many bodybuilders in my life. It was just amazing. You know how those people look. Yeah, everyone there is a a fitness model or bodybuilder of some kind. It seems like trying to be found. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a zoo. It's quite a, I don't guess there could have been a half million people in 300,000 square feet. That would be. 1.7 1.7 people per square foot or something like that, which is not really <laughs> mathematically possible, but there was a hell of a bunch of, <laughs> hell of a bunch of people there. And, uh, Oh, all walks of life. As they say, it's, it was a, it was a fascinating, fascinating day to walk around in this vendor space and all of the, it, this is a great big giant deal. So you guys had a booth rented this year and they canceled the goddamn Arnold. <laughs> That's, That's how right. profoundly serious everyone was about committing professional suicide this year, just to be perceived as following the, the rules. They canceled the biggest economic event in the state of Ohio for 2020. So uh, you guys had one booth rented? How much was yeah. a, how much was a booth now? Well, th- three grand this year for the for that is for one one hundred square feet. Ten by ten is three thousand dollars. So it's a ten foot frontage, yep. and and ten foot deep. So that's two tables basically. Really, it's one almost. It, yeah, it's really it's, it's one one table it's and a little one. bit of storage and enough room for two people to stand. Wow. Three grand. That's for the whole weekend, right? Right. So I'm curious as to how you cancel something like that because the Arnold is paid for it. You guys had to have paid for that booth way back last year, right? Yeah, the uh, Arnold is in the beginning of March. We actually paid for that probably in 2019 yet. I would think we, I think we probably cut the check, uh, back in November or December of 2019. Oh, I would, I was thinking you'd done that last summer. I but, think we, uh, we, we actually had, you must've been late. Is you pay, well, no, you pay 50% down. So in, right. uh, that's right now. So we did, we booked our booth as early as we could. It opens up in like June. We 50, uh, 50% down. So send them 1500 bucks then, and then come around December. You, you owe them the next half. Do they have a, uh, an order of preference for who gets a booth. I'm sure that thing's sold out every year. The vendor space has to be sold out well, every year. It was kind of so surprising. People that have been there so previously curious. certainly have preference over new people coming in, right? Is that how it works? Uh, not necessarily. I think if you're a if you're an enormous vendor taking up you know rogue premium, fitness yeah, and- rogue if you're rogue fitness or some of these uh giant the booths bigger supplement companies bodybuilding.com have- something like yes. that. Yes. Because some of them have fifty thousand dollar booth spaces, you know, yeah. and, and oh, I have I, to I've assume they have it, yeah. some pr- pre- preference there. But if you're Joe Schmo like us renting a, a three to six thousand dollar booth space, it's mm-hmm. first come first serve. It opens up at midnight on like June fifth, whatever the date is, and mm-hmm. I, so I was on my computer at midnight because we had a booth th- there last year. And, uh, w- which was actually our first year there with a booth. We'd been there a couple years prior, but hadn't want to make the commitment of the putting down the money and the shipping all the, uh, Just, merchandise there and everything mm-hmm. that goes into it. Um, but last year was the first one that we, we had done and we, we learned a few things from that. And one of which would, 
was uh, moving to a, a more prime location. So we wanted to be on that right as soon as the, those opened up, and we were this time. So we had kind of what we thought was the perfect spot for what we were doing in, in comparison to last year. We were pretty excited about that, actually. And uh, it is a big you, – you're talking about the magnitude of the event, and it is that big, and it is that big for us as as the biz, business that we're in. You could easily do uh, – you know, if you talked percentage of sales for the year, it wouldn't be crazy for us to do 20 or 25 percent of our sales for an entire year over three day, uh, that yeah, three days. Span. Arnold. So it pays for the yeah. booth rent. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yep, it, yep. It, 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 our first it's a profitable year, it a deal, right? It, yeah, it was an extremely profitable experience for us, even in year one, when we felt in in retrospect, we were making a lot of mistakes. Um, being more on the ball this next year, I thought. Yeah, we thought we were a well-oiled machine this year, so we were really ready to capitalize on that. Um, And the other thing that's uh, tough for us is living in South Dakota. Columbus, Ohio is, what, 2,000 miles, 1,800? Yeah, is that far away? Oh, my God. It's it's, it's 2,000 round trip. Oh, round trip. Yeah, you're right. So it's 1,000 miles. It's 1,000 miles. Wow. So, yeah, it takes us two Let me look at my map here. It, yeah, you, you should. It's I just pretty can't. Deceiving. P- people consider South Dakota and Ohio both in the Midwest. Yeah. You make the drive between the two, and you'll wonder how the hell those are both considered the same geographical South area. Dakota. Oh, that, oh, I see. That South Dakota yeah. is as far from Ohio as Texas is from Ohio. Yeah. So, yeah, and we have it, to drive this there, is a, and we take... This is almost an equilateral triangle, isn't it? <laughs> what yeah. an interesting shape. That's uh, so. Uh, you guys just got in the car and in the truck and just drove everything over there. Did you ship stuff or did you did you carry no, that's it? What most we would, of it we would it. always load up all of our merchandise and take it ourselves, um, just to you know control the whole process. And God, so that's where what do we did you the park year. the truck at the Arnold? See, it's all kinds <laughs> of questions. The logistics yeah. of this thing. Are, yeah. Uh, people don't understand how how big this event is. You've got no. three hundred thousand. How many vendors are there? I don't. There, know there have the to be is. eight or nine hundred vendors there, uh, right? I, I was going to say it's it's close to a thousand. I think honestly, yeah. when you right. when you factor in, because even outside of the largest co- chunk of the convention center, there's still more vendors. You know, it's less premium spots, but right. I, I think it's close to a thousand, and it is. When you get there and you arrive and you're unloading, it is a little bit of madness, especially in our first year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, it, it's chaos. There yeah, it's no chaos. It. It, it is oh, God. I, how could it be otherwise? I mean, all of those people trying to get all of their shit in the building on yep. Thursday. Yep. Yep. yep, and there's only a couple loading docks, so you have yeah. – you know, a thousand vendors using a couple loading docks. It, it I, actually went goes probably a little smoother than you but, think it would, but it's still not a perfect process by any means. Oh, I bet so not. It, and this year we found out it got canceled. Uh, so it's the timeline is like you said. You said we get there Thursday afternoon yeah. typically and start on loading. So we usually take off Wednesday morning, really early at you know five or six a.m. Uh, we found out Tuesday night. At about six or so, we had our vehicle completely packed to the gills, ready to get on the road. We just just had to go to bed and then get on the road the next morning. Um, got messaged from someone that said, "I think the governor of uh, Ohio is going to shut down the Arnold tonight." <laughs> God almighty! And uh, I kind of laughed and said, "Ah, yeah, good good practical joke, buddy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Don't, don't screw with me right now." All uh, right. And then we, we got. We got to get Tommy and I got together on it, and we watched the conference uh, and press conference live there. And that's sure what they enough, to do was close it down. Ha ha! Yeah, it was going down. <laughs> the largest fitness event in the world has been shut down by this clown in Ohio. Well, yeah, and quite actually, it's the largest sporting event in the world by number of competitors. It has more competitors yeah. than the Olympics itself has. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I knew that. Yeah, yeah. because. I mean, it's uh, it's in the same place every year. You know that you can go. You make plans a year in advance. If you want to enter the meet, you enter the meet. There's no qualifiers for most of the meets in the Arnold. Some I have qualifiers, but I've, there's some national meets associated with it. But it's accessible. You know, it's not in Tokyo. And right. mm-hmm. it's, it's in Ohio. They've, the region up around there 
has gotten used to accommodating enough hotel room rentals for that whole process. And in, in reality, the whole Arnold thing lasts a couple of weeks. You know, it's a, it, it starts way out ahead of the, of the three days that everybody thinks of as being, because right. all the national governing bodies have meetings up there and, and all kind of business is done. And it's a, it's a big, big deal. And for the governor to just say, no, eh, you know, you guys are, can you think about, can you imagine how much money that cost? Just a lot of about people, that. Too. The number of, number of people affected by that. Just think about that. I mean, people that were already there. Yeah, people the, the, that had been have, there a week, yep. you know, getting yep, this yep, thing yep. ready and setting it up. And he says, eh, yeah, I think we ought to close this down this year. And yeah, we know people that got on planes with the Arnold on. They got off their plane while, by the, while they were in the air. The Arnold got canceled. Is, the Arnold was canceled. Yeah. Yep. And companies that do the same thing as, as us, you know, selling merchandise in the same space that we commu- communicate quite a bit with. A lot of them had shipped their stuff there. Yeah. And they, they, they gear up for this. You know, that's their biggest inventory purchase for the year. Right. And they, now, you know, they live in uh, Ontario, Canada. And all of their merchandise is now sitting in somewhere Columbus, Ohio. In Columbus, yeah. Ohio, when they were right. planning on going there, organizing yep. it, selling it, bringing as little of it back as they had to. Now they got to get all of it back, and they don't even know where it is. <laughs> oh, can yeah. you imagine the the insanity of this? <laughs> oh, I can't. That that's that's uh, you know, this has been a hard year for the for the fitness industry. You know, we're considered non-essential, you know, at least two major global uh, fitness chains are bankrupt. You know, Gold's in 24 hours. Gold's in 24 hour, yeah. yeah. I see 20, 24 hour, cl- j- they just just uh, did Chapter 11 bankruptcy and they're closing a couple hundred locations, there, yes. I think. Yeah. Yeah, Golds, two weeks ago, Golds declared Chapter 11 and closed, I believe, 130 company-owned stores. Damn, that's a lot. And uh, one here in Wichita Falls just closed up. Closed what, up. What do you think the uh, future is uh, for, for gyms of that nature? Not necessarily a starting strength uh, gym, but more of the large Globo gyms. Is there going to be a long-lasting uh <clears throat> effect on that well i i wrote an article about that uh and published it on pj media last month and what i think we're going to see is small clubs like yours and mine and our starting strength gyms and our starting strength affiliate gyms i think we will probably be okay under a couple of circumstances all right Circumstance number one, we'll be okay if we don't go in to a business situation with onerous overhead. If we've got good rent, we've got a good lease, we've got a favorable location situation, we're not just murdered with overhead every month. If it's manageable, in other words, if we can take a hit and survive it, then I think we'll be okay. And the second circumstance is we're going to have to have an owner's group, have to have a group of people that are willing to tell the local government no when they come and try to lean on us and make us close. Because you got to remember, they don't care about everybody's health and safety. They care about being reelected. They care about the appearance of caring for everybody's health and safety. That's their actual altruism does not exist in those people. We're the ones that actually care about the health and safety of our members. That's why we're in this business, right? Uh, The mayor doesn't give a shit about any of that. And he's saying this because by God, He's in power. And by God, what he says goes. And uh, 
the governor, why she's in power, and she knows what's best for everyone. And that's why they're saying all this shit. So what we've got to be in a position to do is say, no, we're not going to comply with that. And just, you know, have a ball or two about you. And when they come knocking on the door and they say, you got to close, you'll say either, no, I don't. Go ahead and write me the ticket. Or you say, okay, we'll close. <laughs> <laughs> We're closed now. <laughs> All right. Bye. You know, but you, you can't do that to yourself because they've shown you what they're going to do next time. You already know what they're going to do next time. They went to great pains to demonstrate to you what they were going to do. And you can't be in business like that. You can't be in business without income. You cannot pay your rent. You cannot pay your employees if you run off all your members because you don't have a place for them to use the membership they bought from you. This isn't complicated, is it? But if if this is going to, if we're going to last, we're going to have to be prepared to do these things, right? Now, what is a 40,000 square foot globo gym going to do well it depends on how they're set up doesn't it you know the the standard model for gyms like that is uh 50 to 55 percent of the floor space is cardio right which means for a hundred thousand or a four hundred forty thousand square foot club you may have 200 machines right treadmills ellipticals Bikes. What are some of the other? I don't even know. I haven't been in one in a long time. I think that's Ro- all of ro- them. Rowers. <laughs> rowers. Yeah, yeah. All that. All that cardio shit. And all of those pieces are six, seven thousand dollars a piece. The club doesn't own that. The club leases that. Right. Now some clubs own all that, but Twenty Four Hour and Golds didn't. So that all that stuff's on a floor plan. Right, And they have to pay the floor plan every month, which means they have to have income every month, which means that if the city comes in and shuts them down, the, to- the, 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 the clock is ticking here mm-hmm. on how many lease payments they can make before they have to give the shit back. Right? And, you know, you've got, you've got a big payroll to meet, You've got 20 or 30 kids at least on payroll. You're going to have a manager that's getting paid something. You know, so big clubs, I think, are on the way out. They've definitely been gutted by this Mm -hmm. situation because they've been placed in a situation that is just economically untenable through no fault of their own. Because this model that they use where they've got a, a margin, they got enough margin uh, over overhead to make everybody get you know get a paycheck and make the company a little bit of a little bit of money. But the minute the local government comes in and says, you know you're non-essential and therefore you will be closed, suddenly their ass is completely on the line. So here's the equation. If you want to put in a big fucking gym, a great big 40,000 square foot gym in a, in a middle market anywhere, who's going to loan you the money to do that right now? What kind of idiot would write a note like that? (laughs) A lot of risk there. You know, there's a whole bunch of risk because they've already shown you what they're going to do. Yep. You know, here's an even more more horrible question. Let's say you're the the manager of this place. And you've worked your way up through the company and you're making 90, 95, 100 grand a year. You're a good manager. You're capable of training your sales staff. You take care of business. Everything gets taken care of. You're doing a great job for these guys. And you decide, you know, I think this time I'm going to buy a house. So you go to the bank for a, a, a homeowner's loan to get a mortgage to buy a house. And the loan officer says, now, now what line of work are you in exactly? 
And you say, well, I'm the manager of the Gold's Gym. The new Gold's Gym here, We remember? It's a nice big facility over there in that shopping center. We built it two years ago. And I've been here in town. I like it here. I'm going to stay here, and I want to buy a house. And the guy says, wait a minute. You're a gym manager? You manage that Globo Gym out there in the shopping center on the edge of town? Yeah. I said, oh, I'm sorry, you're not eligible for a loan because your business is what we now call non-essential. Now you don't get a house. You know, this is, this is real bad. This divvying things up into essential, non-essentials is real bad. So I'm, I'm, my, my prognostication for the, the big, expensive, flashy, chrome-intensive, cardio-intensive, square-foot-intensive gym industry is not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That have makes have you guys sense. ever been in a lifetime fitness place? You ever I've seen one of those? In, I've been through one before. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, isn't that the damn thing building as far as how much is there? Oh God. There's, there's one down between, uh, down in North Dallas between Frisco and Allen. That's it. It's at least the size of a very, very big Walmart with two stories, two or three <laughs> stories. I, I never seen such a damn thing. Indoor pools, outdoor pools. Their <laughs> their locker rooms are bigger than my gym, mm -hmm. than the whole damn gym. Yeah. And uh, now that kind of a thing, that's a capital intensive enterprise, isn't it? I don't know. Is that where you want to put money in the future? They've demonstrated to you what they're going to do. And unless there is a big, giant response the next time this comes around, and they're already dragging that out, you know. You've seen the headlines. Resurgence of cases in, in some cities. Well, they're just getting you ready for September. Right? So what are you going to do? That's, you know. I don't know. Is Will there ever be another Arnold? Now that's a good. Now, I mean, that's a that's good a, isn't that an excellent question? Now think about yeah, that. Like, when, they, when is that okay again? Right. When will that be okay? When will you know for sure that spending three grand on a booth is a good idea? You know it's when will question. the when yeah. will the promoters of the Arnold? That, that, so here's here's my question. Did you get your money back? Any of it? We got twenty percent back. And with a credit they, for eighty percent, or a credit for a hundred percent for next year, we they got were actually yeah. pretty good. We were in the dark for yeah. a while, but in their defense, they were pretty good about it. They were just slow, but yeah, eventually yeah. we did get money 20, back plus so a free. How booth did they extra. afford to do that? <laughs> That's a, a loan. Think about that. How did they well, afford? They, you know, they. I I know for a fact they took a loan because. The late, at least based on their communication, because the lady told me before they gave us our 20% back that they had the checks written, but they're just waiting on the paperwork at the bank to be completed before they can send the checks out. So, so they maybe should capitalize the, the checks. Program. I'm not really sure. Right, I, right. right. I, but what are they going to do? That's, you know, and Mar I mean, that March really is the question. Isn't that far away. I could see you risking three grand. All right, three grand's not that much money. Right. But the promoters of this damn thing could just as easily be told next January, oh, you guys aren't, you know. Hey, Rip, that, that also yeah. tells you about how how lucrative it is for them, for them to gamble on this again. But I don't know that they're going to gamble on yeah. it again is well, what I'm saying. They gave them, they gave them the money back. They gave them the money back. They gave them credit for next year. Yeah. you got a booth. You're going to owe them want, the money for next year. It's it's in their interest to give us uh, a free booth next year because they want to make sure people come back. Sure, they do. You know, they're that. I'm sure they're concerned about that right now. You know, how many are mm -hmm. going to come back? Right. Well, I, I they ought to be. Yeah, they ought to be concerned about it. I can see a lot of people making a decision not to do that. 
depends on how bad they took it uh, this past year, how much money they lost, not just in terms of the booth, but all the logistics that they had to engage in to make plans to go to this thing, all the inventory they've got laying around that they intended to sell at the Arnold that now they've got an inventory that's just sitting there with cash tied up. Oh, it's just, you know, there's hundreds of things to consider here. Not to, I, uh, not to right. get overly political about it, too, but, you know, this is also going to be after the election. So you yes. might never hear of COVID again. Might not. Might not. But I promise you, you'll hear of the next disease. There'll be another disease. This worked too well. Right? <laughs> this just went too smoothly. Everybody did exactly what they were told. And, uh, no, this is, we, we taught them what they needed to know about what we'll do. So, uh, yeah, the, the Arnold is a fascinating little example of, of how a big event like this, uh, has a potential to devastate an economy. And you just multiply that across the entire world. Think about the economic hit we have just done to ourselves. All that money that's in your pocket because you couldn't go out to eat normally would have gone somewhere else and made other people money and made other people money, right? But this, when you... When you shut everything down like this, it's just, <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. So uh, what are your plans right now? Are y'all going back? What are you going to do? As of right now, yeah, we're, if, we're, we're going back. Yeah, if, especially w- the booth is paid for at this point. Yeah, it's a free booth now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean we, technically right. you could say we're still owed it, but right. – um, yeah, well, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna try and make a run at it. Assuming they're having it, we're gonna be there. Yep, right. That's our philosophy. If if they have well, it, we'll be there. I don't blame you. I mean, if, you know, if it's if it's not gonna be a whole bunch of uh, money up front you can't afford, I think you ought to make plans to go. And the but other, thing I'm just all is, I'm saying is is it wouldn't surprise me if the promoters of this thing. At the slightest provocation, I'd call it off way in advance. If the if the governor of Ohio was going to was going to behave as though this was a possibility to close it down again just by fiat without due process, just jerk this giant piece of business out from under the feet of everybody involved in it, and you know. The governor of Ohio doesn't have the authority to do that, but he did it anyway, right? He didn't have the authority to do that, yet it was done, and everybody went along with it. This is just as much our fault as it is his, and this is why I'm saying when the time comes around and your 4,000-square-foot gym is told to close, you're going to have some decisions to make. Now, I don't want to be put in that position either, but I'm not the one that put me in that position. So regarding your situation with the inventory for the Arnold, what did you guys, what did you guys do? Did you, did you make up a whole bunch of stuff in advance? And have you, are you still sitting on it or have you been able to sell it? What, what did, well, it, cause this is a real important, this is one of these things that's going to control the behavior of everybody that's, that wants to be a vendor at the Arnold last year. What did this thing do to us when we were told we couldn't sell all this inventory we bought at the biggest sales event in the hit in the, the world as far as fitness is concerned? Yeah, it's, it's been an interesting few months for us for sure. Um, right away when you find out about it, it's like we have sort of a rough sales goal in mind for the year for what we think is doable. And the first thought is that's out the window. There, there's no way that's happening. Um, because your biggest event of the year is going out. What, how, how are you going to meet that? Um, so then it's all right, what can we do? What, what, what can we do to capitalize on the situation or make the best of it in any way? And right away, you know, we had a sale, we saw a lot of other companies were doing the same thing. We had a sale, um, to all of our 
followers, fans, supporters, to their credit, they did an amazing job supporting us. Uh, people were giving us a lot of shout outs. Um, and to be honest, that was at the time, that was the craziest three days of online sales we'd ever had to yeah. the point where it almost matched the Arnold over the course of three wow. days. It, it was, it was crazy. And That's great. then, yeah, then you think, well, okay, this is going to die off. And, um, surprisingly enough for us, that hasn't been the case. Um, we, we've been riding away for about three months now of some pretty awesome support. Yeah. And part of it, what, what kicked in for us that, that turned out to be a pretty sweet deal is all the home gym space that was going up all over the place with all these, uh, uh, closed, closed gyms around the country is we started making, uh, shitload of flags banners, and flags. banners. Yep. And so people start seeing those things popping up on Instagram. They, they hop onto the site, they see t-shirts, they see stickers, they see all of this. So, um, it's one of those things it, it's a bad situation, but somehow it, it has worked out in our favor, uh, uh, really well. And we would have never have guessed that, uh, no. when this was all going down. But it was also part of it is is being a, being in a position that we can easily kind of switch those gears and and move to that pretty pretty easily and quickly. So for us, it at least worked out pretty well. I don't know if everyone in the yeah you know, I, I everyone don't think else that's could the say the same every, yeah, thing, that's but it's definitely not the case for right. everyone. But yeah, we we did get a little lucky yeah. and uh, we were in the right spot that it, it did work out in our favor. Well, I think that a uh, couple of things work in your in your favor and in our favor being in the kind of the smaller gym in business of this as well. We don't deal with people, uh, by and large that are fucking morons. <laughs> you know, I think that that's we don't true. deal with fools <laughs> yes. and, and, and cowards and, uh, and dishonest shitty people, people that train like we train. This is an activity that kind of sorts for better people. Every yep. once in a while, a shit bird will fly by, right? <laughs> but it, but most of the people that you guys deal with and that we guys that deal with are are better than average people, and That's true. that works for us. That mm -hmm. works for us. Uh, small gyms deal with you know depending on the on the uh, the character of the gym. Every gym has a character. Depending on the character of the gym, small gyms generally deal with better people. So we're not, we're not in, in, a, in a disadvantaged position because we're dealing with a shady demographic already. Uh, a lot of people from the, the big gym end of this thing uh, were just helpless because they don't know that they ought to learn how to do something besides a leg extension. They don't, <laughs> they don't have any idea yeah. that, they, that they ought to know, you know more about this than that. And when we've got a uh, we got a, a demographic that's self sufficient like that, that's honest and hardworking, they're gonna find a way to train, right? And the home gym business, the home gym equipment business, is booming right now. You can't find any plates in the country. No, they're all yep. sold, that's... and there's a big giant market for it because everybody saw when their gym closed. I mean, there's a handful of people in every big Globo gym, every Gold's gym, every 24 hour handful of people. They're actually in there to train. Those people want to train. Those people need to train and they're going to train. They're going to figure out a way to do it. And they're in the equipment business. They're in the equipment market. Rather, they're trying to build a home gym. And every time you want to build a home gym, you want a banner up in the gym. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, now it's your gym and you get to decorate it the way you want to. And this is the kind of thing that you guys are seeing. Uh, you know, if the, the, the equipment business is, is, uh, booming right now. I mean, our, our guy that, uh, caps welding that builds our starting strength bars has been out yep. of stock for quite a while, he's probably, he indicated to me that he would be back shipping bars. Oh, this is a couple of weeks ago. And he said six weeks. So here in about a month, he'll be back to shipping bars. They've got a big bunch of material ordered and takes your strength systems. It makes all of our starting strength equipment. Those guys are back ordered. Everybody's working as hard as they can 
to get yep. all this stuff ready because there's a gigantic market for it. Uh, we've been working with one of our coaches who is very shortly going to be in the cast iron plate business. So there's going to be a source for cast iron plates that didn't exist previously. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, that you've got a bunch of people here that, are better than average people. We're we're fortunate to be associated with this this quality of people, and uh, they're going to train, and they're going to do all the stuff that that they like to do because they're they're just not going to be told no because that's not the kind of people they are. And uh, you're going to be selling some banners as a result of this. Have you ever thought about going in the equipment business? Do you sell any any equipment as such, or is it all just graphic design stuff. Yeah, we've kind of stayed out of the equipment side of things. Just the amount of, we've never really formally discussed it, but you know, the amount of money and investment and time and shipping. I mean, it's such a bigger expense and it is. investment in all parts than what yeah. we, than probably what we could handle keeping right. our day jobs. But there, there's, there's things there's, like there's more uh, warehouse you know, space wraps involved and straps, in it. wraps and straps and that yeah. kind of thing that we could probably pretty easily get involved into. But it's like, yeah, there, there's people out there that are doing that stuff well already. Yeah, but we feel we like don't we have, have nothing to add. to add to that conversation right. of, of right. that equipment. Right. No, I understand that. It's it's a warehouse space intensive. It's capital intensive. Minimum order on a on a on a batch of plates puts you up by the time you pay for the tools and everything, puts you up into the almost hundred thousand dollar range. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta have a bunch of cash laying around. Yep. And stuff. Textiles are cheap, they're cheap to buy. You yep. know, piece goods are cheap to inventory. They don't take up a lot of space. They're compressible, you know. Yep. You mash them into a little ball if you have to. You know, they, they, don't, <laughs> they don't take up a lot of space. Easy to handle, cheap to ship, that sort of thing. I don't blame you. I'm not in the equipment business either. Books are a big enough pain in the ass. <laughs> but I don't want to. Some guy drops his bar loaded with 405 across his bench. And is mad because his bar is bent. I don't want to talk to a guy like that. Yep, yep. You know, I just, I just don't want to deal with that. So, uh, your so your posters don't. are good though, Rip. We've got a, a copy of the new uh, the uh, squat bench deadlift press power clean posters. Yeah, we've got then we got clever quotes yep. posters. The clever quotes, the pithy aphorisms <laughs> series. <laughs> you know. We've got, uh, we're, we're covering I think we're, we've got paper covered. Yeah. I think we, we know how to print things on paper. Okay. Yep. We've got good people that know how to do this. So we're staying with the paper part. So, uh, well, uh, you guys sound like you're coming along nicely. Uh, uh, give me your website again. I think we probably mentioned it's massonomics.com. M A S S E N O M I C S dot com. Yep, that's and, right. Uh, hey, Rip, there was one one other thing I was going to ask you before we wrapped up here. All right. uh, on 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 our podcast, each episode we've done about two hundred and twenty of them so far. Weekly episodes. We oh man, you're uh, doing this little us. segment. Well. <laughs> We're, our strategy is just to outlast people. It's not to be better. It's just to exist. Just a, we're, we're like cockroaches. It's the war of attrition. Exactly. You're going to win the war of attrition. I understand. That's, exa that's our strategy. But yeah. we, we do this little segment each week that we uh, we call overrated, underrated. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a pretty simple little game where we, we usually kick out three or four topics e each week. Right. And uh, our guest on the show has to respond with either overrated, underrated. You, usually they can't decide that something's appropriately really rated they have to uh they can't sit on the fence you either got to pick overrated yeah, underrated, we're, overrated running, wondering right. if, uh, sure. we're running if uh we could uh play this little segment with you today we got hey, a few topics for you shoot man i'm, right, I'm never right. short of an opinion okay. i may be well, short of other things but i'm not short of opinion that was we were wondering if you would be able to make an opinion you know these these might be tough subjects so. I, I typically have no trouble with that and, 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 and also, so this episode, you didn't do comments from the haters, did you? No, we, we don't do comments from the haters. 
when we have oh, I, when we have I guests. I didn't say that in the reverb voice. The the Sean. well, you can't do the reverb voice. <laughs> we, we only do, and I have to think about it. So, for example, if I mean, let me think about it right now, we don't do come, come in, 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 sir, in sir, from, from uh, the heaters, the heaters. Sir, sir. <laughs> unless it's just me. And okay. and I'm going to do Q and A or read a bunch of insane shit from somebody else, but if if we got guests on the show, we don't we don't want to waste time with you know by making people just sit here and watch me do comments from the haters. <laughs> I think the last one of those we did was with Efforting, right? Yeah, yeah. He had to sit yeah. and endure me doing comments from the haters, <laughs> and I looked at that and I thought, you know, we got to stop doing that when we have a guest. <laughs> And bring him all the way up here to listen to me bitch about <laughs> the bottom two percent on YouTube <laughs> comments. That's still yep. that's silly to involve him in that. So we don't we quit doing that except for our uh, our little uh, one off shows where it's just me and and Rusty and uh, Bree and Nick here in the room, you know. So, uh, but you guys have got a overrated underrated segment yeah, that you do well so maybe i'll steal this let's try this yeah, you, you got a like list it. yeah we've got a few we've got a few good ones here for you rip all, all right well i'll one. play go ahead okay overrated or underrated oklahoma uh it's underrated underrated you expected me to say overrated didn't you i kind of did I yeah. Yeah. No. yeah no i am shocked I, no, I think Oklahoma is highly underrated. Oklahoma is not a bad place to be. There's not anybody much there. It's wide open. The tax the taxes are low. They've got a little, you know, a little fake income tax. It's about two percent, which is you know, but their property taxes as a result are very low. Uh, they're generally, you know, governed by people who would rather be playing golf, you know, <laughs> so they don't, they don't bother you a lot. They tend to leave your ass alone because it's, they're just not ambitious enough to come in and try to tell you what color of necktie you're expected to wear on, you know, Tuesday, that sort of thing. And uh, I'll say their, their biggest shortcoming is their driver education program. All right. <laughs> now here we are in Wichita Falls. We're only like 20 miles from the from the Red River, so there's a lot of Oklahoma traffic here, and without, right. I'm telling you guys, without exception, I'll be driving down uh, the highway. We got a three lane highway here. I'll be driving down the the highway coming into town, and every single time where I see somebody go from the far left lane, cross three lanes of traffic to take an exit over here in about fifty feet. And God damned if it's not got Oklahoma tags on the car. <laughs> Every single time, those people do not have any idea how to drive up there. Other than that, you know, I think it's underrated. All right. You got the next one? I, I got the next one for you here, Rip. Uh, overrated or underrated? Ross Perot. Oh, he's highly overrated. <laughs> he's highly overrated. Ross Perot, he's too short. <laughs> he's got a bad haircut and he made his money off of government contracts. Once you, in other words, once you get your foot in the door, you're done. Yep. You know, not overrated, highly overrated. Overrated or underrated skim milk, skim milk. How is it rated at all? <laughs> That's it's for you blue. to decide. Yeah. It's blue. Yeah. Don't drink skim milk. That's that's like small curd cottage cheese. Yeah. Don't, don't eat that. <laughs> just stupid. So yes, underrated. No, that'd be overrated. Overrated. It'd be okay. overrated. Okay. Right. All right. Overrated or underrated monoliths. Oh, overrated, highly overrated. We don't, That's, I, I won't have one. Yeah. I won't have, I, it's just, can you not what are those damn things enough? worth? 
to what? step out with the fucking yeah. bar. Yeah, can you well, can you not pick the bar up, walk back with it, <laughs> set up, squat it, do your set, and walk back to the rack and set it back in the rack? Why can't you do that? Do you know why you can't do that? Because you're a fucking pussy. That's why you're done. <laughs> That's why you can't yeah, do that. And, and they cost about four grand, I think. Oh, I think they start about six grand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I start about six grand. I, they take all all that space. They take a just stand up, walk back, squat down, do your do your set, do your competition rep, walk it back in, set it back down. Because all of that is part of the squat. All of it's part of the squat. It demonstrates your ability to handle the weight. The most of the problems involved in Powerlifting, geared modern powerlifting, come from the invention of the monolift. So, I, I don't know. Overrated, underrated is not a strong enough expression of my <laughs> contempt for that particular bastardization of the best lift in the gym. Okay, very fair. Last one that we had here: overrated or underrated? The bench press. Oh, I think the bench press is uh damn, let me the bench press is both overrated and underrated. It can't be either one of the two because there are a huge bunch of people that have come to associate the bench press with with the only lift you need to do in the gym and then there's Always, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and all the the quasi-intellectual CrossFit types who think that the bench press is absolutely useless. Well, the bench press is not absolutely useless, but if you're not squatting and deadlifting, why does it matter? You know, all the gym bros at the Globo gyms that are all in the process of going out of business uh, right now, uh, all they want to do is bench press. Their whole thing is bench press. Uh, but it's useful. You need to bench. You know, you don't need to just press. So I don't know if I have to choose between overrated and underrated. I get that that's the deal here. <laughs> that's I, how you know it's a good question. Yeah, right, under in this right, spot right now. Yeah. So it's, uh, I'd have to say it's overrated. Okay. Even though I consider it necessary. Yeah. That that sound logic, I think. And yeah. you passed the game. That was that was the segment and you just you passed. Yeah. Man, you that's definitely. cool. Yeah. That's cool. We, what we'd like to do is have you on our show at some point in time in the future and we'll come up with a, a list of even better topics to one up this game. Hey, for we here. can do that. Now that we know yeah. how to All right. now that we know how to operate our Skype program here. <laughs> yeah. We can, <laughs> we can do that. Right. Well, thank you guys for being with me. Tanner and Tommy from Massonomics have joined us today on Starting Strength Radio. Uh, go to their website, Massonomics. Buy some shit from them. Buy, for that matter, buy some shit from us, too. We're at startingstrength.com. <laughs> you got money? Buy some shit from us. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next Friday.